Okay, we are live now. First, we can start first. Uh, should we start, sir? Sir, I'm not able to hear you. Hello. Yes, sir. You can start with that. Oh, okay, sir. So, hello and a warm welcome to everyone present here. Myself, Harsh Shivari from Sri Hela Tiwari College of Engineering will be hosting today's pilot to pilot webinar organized by Sri LR Tiwari College of Aviation. So the main aim of Sri LR Tiwari College of Aviation for organizing today's webinar is that the aspiring pilots can directly talk to the expert pilots in the field of aviation and get themselves clear about pursuing aviation or rather airlines as their career. I would like to welcome our respected founder chairman of our college Sri Rallan Tiwari Ji, our Honorable Secretary Rahul Tiwari Sir and our Joint Secretary Krishna Tiwari Ma'am. I would also like to welcome the Chief Operation Officer of Rahul Education Society, Mr. Utsav Tiwari Sir, our respected principals, teachers, parents, aspiring students and faculty members. Most of the people often say that sky is the limit, but for the people who love aviation, the sky is their home. Yes. I use the word aviation, you all might wonder, what is the term aviation? So aviation is referred as the designing, building or flying of an aircraft. To make it even simpler, aviation is flying using an aircraft like an aeroplane. For introducing us the world of aviation and also to give a brief representation about it, I would like to welcome two expert pilots of today's aviation era Captain Jayesh Kirtikar, sir, and Captain Shriyansh Talekar, sir. Thank you, Harsh. Thank you for the introduction. All right. So, uh, Harsh, shall we take over from here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the warm welcome, Harsh, and uh, welcome everyone to this pilot to pilot workshop that is uh, uh, introduced uh, to you by uh, LR Tiwari College of Aviation in collaboration with Maverick Aviation. Okay. Today, we are here to talk and uh, basically guide you on uh, the field of aviation and how is the journey of one becoming a commercial pilot. I'm sure all of you have wondered, and this is one field that is not really very explored in our country. Okay. At least to the masses out here. So today we are here to help you and help you understand how, what are the steps? What are the difficulties that you can face? And what are the different phases in flight training? We have prepared a small uh, questionnaire, which we'll go through. And uh, at the same time, you guys can also ask your questions on the platform so that at the end of the session, we can answer it all. Okay. I hope you all uh, all will enjoy this session. It'll be also informative for you to know more about this field and how all uh, things function. Okay. So, uh, Dheeraj sir, I'll go ahead with the presentation. That's fine. Sure. Yes. You can start. Okay. So talk about, as you see on the screen right now, we have various questions that uh, are there. Firstly, the introduction is already done by you. Okay. Uh, before we head on to this, uh, I would like to tell you about uh, the collaboration that we are doing with uh, uh, LR Tiwari College of Aviation. Uh, we are soon planning to start a BSc aviation or a whole aviation wing in the college will be focused towards uh, education related to all fields of aviation. To start with, you're going to do BSc aviation, which is a very reputed course offered by the prestigious University of Mumbai. And uh, alongside that course, we're also going to start commercial pilot license training for all of you. Okay. Now, BSc Aviation, to talk about that, it's a course which is designed and made for commercial pilots who are either doing the course or who have already completed the course. Okay. We will be, since all of you, I'm sure most of the people out here are doing their 10 plus 2, we will be starting this course alongside the commercial pilot training, which is a mandatory requirement towards it. 
BSc aviation just like any other bachelor's in science course is a 3 year degree course which goes alongside with your CPL training okay you have two semesters per year so you have a total of six semesters which are all focused on subjects related to aviation now when we go through the seminar you'll also come across the different subjects that you have to study and for your betterment the university has designed a course in a way that all the subjects that you're already studying or already will study towards your pilot training are the same for your bsc aviation as well okay so you don't have to study anything extra apart from what you're already doing now all the subjects are focused on aviation so you'll have nothing from your 11th or 12th that is going to be there in this 3 years of your course okay we'll be having all uh, instructors which are pilots or trained pilots and they will be the ones guiding you throughout your journey okay at the end of the course bsc aviation provides a very good advantage over your cpl license which you'll have because a cpl license is similar to any other license that you might have i'm sure most of you are 17 or 18 and will be getting their driver's license soon okay just like a driver's license gives you a privilege to drive a car a commercial pilot license only gives you a privilege to start flying okay but commercially as a commercial pilot like the ones you see at the airport while you're trying to board an aircraft or the ones that actually fly you from one point to another okay now this license by itself is just a license it's not giving you any added qualification apart from your 10 plus 2 however adding a bsc aviation degree onto it gives you a graduation to work with now majority of the airlines in the future will be asking for this degree along with your commercial pilot license when they offering job to fresher pilots okay so this is a benefit that you're going to get through the course and this is what the whole bsc aviation is focused on now since this is a course designed for pilots it is mandatory for you to also do your commercial pilot license training and that is what we are here to uh, help you understand okay now as i said this is not something that is uh, known you'll get a lot of information on the web but it's here and there and you might be misguided very easily so this webinar focuses on that okay so to start with let's go on to the questions that we are going to talk about today the first thing is why do you want to be a pilot okay now uh, we have our uh, own instructor and student at one time that is a uh, captain rajdeep udupa he takes care of one of our wing and also our marketing so he'll tell you why he wanted to be a pilot because he's just fresh out of the lot and he will be a better person to talk about the field today rajdeep on to you right so as captain shyam said i was one of his first students when i started out with aviation and um i like most of you out here did not have any kind of uh, prior knowledge you know to ki what is all this about like how do i go about with it and of course the first thing is we need a proper guidance right this is some this is a very niche field engineering uh, medical these things are like very common everyone knows uh how to do it how to go about it give need give j and so on and so forth whatever it is but this is one field in which you cannot find a particular source of information which is very reliable as captain shyam said either udhar se cheeze you'll get stuff from here and there but you won't get any concrete information why do we want to become a pilot like i am sure out of you know all the people 80 to 90% over, of the people over here i'm sure you must have at one point of time in your childhood must have dreamt ki yaar this i want to fly this big plane this big aircraft whatever it is whenever you see an aircraft passing through you want to fly that so that has been my goal of course from the start after my 12th i uh, after 12 this is the first thing that i did i did not have any kind of graduation but i have my bsc in aviation the very course that uh, we are providing right now uh, in uh, in collaboration with lrt wari college and i completed my cpl within uh, i started my cpl journey in 2017 and i was done with my cpl in 2019 so you could say i'm one of the younger pilots out there who did my uh, who immediately went into aviation just after my 12th standard like most of you out here so for this i am i am i cannot you know uh, you know like more, tell you more that we need proper guidance as people who do not have an aviation background we need proper guidance and now as an instructor over here at mavic aviation and as a ex student myself i can give you that feedback that this is something that we really really excel at right there is something that i have there are difficulties that i have faced all of of the captains over here 
we all have had our own struggles at a, at a point of time no for no one the journey has been smooth you when you join us you will get the knowledge of our combined struggles and that will make your journey much 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 more easier as compared to ours and that is what we strive for to make your journey as streamlined as smooth and as simple as we can to get both your graduation and your license so so yeah so why do you want to become a pilot it, it it's a very obvious question who doesn't want to fly in the sky right who doesn't want to have one of the most beautiful uh, office views that you can get ever right ye who doesn't want so the answer is right in front of you right, thank you rajiv for that yeah. thank you so uh, i have already given the introduction and a brief about uh, what we are going to talk today let me just introduce myself my name is captain shrian santosh talekar and i am uh, the ceo and a co-founder with uh, maverick aviation and uh, we have uh, recently collaborated with alatwari college of aviation in order to handle their commercial pilot license training wing under their support okay uh, dheeraj sir here will be uh, with me in this journey and he will be taking care of everything related to bsc aviation whereas me and uh, my colleague and co-founder captain jayesh will be handling the commercial training for you guys okay so uh, jayesh on to you you can introduce yourself good afternoon everyone hi this is captain jayesh here and my full name is captain jayesh kirtikar i am a commercial pilot license holder myself and at the same time i am a co-founder of maverick aviation and i am uh, so happy to be here right now and helping you all students to who want to become a pilot in the future who we will be flying in the future with and helping you guys to become a pilot to become a better pilot like rajdeep just now mentioned that we all have have gone through this struggles okay where we were not from aviation background and we didn't know where to go we didn't have proper guidance we didn't have proper information this internet world was not there 5 years 6 years back okay so for you people all our collective struggles all our collective information all our collective knowledge will be helpful and we all here with uh, dheeraj sir obviously will be helping you guys become a better pilot for tomorrow okay we will be discussing all of this points right now ki how to become a pilot what are the stages of becoming a pilot what is a student pilot commercial pilot what are the advantages of having a bsc aviation and why is it so important that each and every pilot should be a graduate pilot in the future so every one of you guys who are in 12th standard must definitely go for your bsc aviation along with wanting to become a pilot okay apart from that we will be also discussing other things like where you should be flying okay which is the better place for flying okay what are the flying clubs available in the india what are the fee structures how much uh, fees you have to put in how much money you have to put in in becoming a pilot along with your bsc aviation training okay how much duration will it take medical requirements what are the medical standards which you need to maintain throughout your lifetime a uh, type rating training till the point to actually see yourself flying that big commercial airliner okay that a320 or that big airlines which we normally fly with indigo or air india or any other airlines which you have right now in the in the market okay so all of this points will be discussed thoroughly and at the end of the meeting we will be having a question and answer session where we will be taking doubts from you guys so that we can help you in a better way to discuss about uh, the pilot training and bsc aviation training yes all right guys so all right so without any further ado let's head on to the questions that we have uh... framed over here now these are the main things that a lot of students have doubts with when they start their career okay and as i said you will get information about this but we are here to explain it in brief and talk about whatever are the main steps that you need to start uh, you need to take in order to start your career as a commercial pilot okay the first thing that we are going to discuss is what is spl ppl and cpl okay now there are different categories of licenses okay even when you talk about i'll give you a simple life a day to day life example as i said you have a driver's license if you look behind your driver's license you'll have various categories of uh, vehicles that you can drive you have light motor vehicles you have heavy motor vehicles you have motorcycles motorcycles without gear and all of that okay similarly when you want to fly you have various categories of licenses based on what you what privileges you want out of that license Okay. Now, just like before getting a driver's license, you need to have a learner's license, right? You get a learner's license a month prior. You get 
through using the learner's license privilege you can start learning and then you can start then after that you give an exam a test a driver's test and a uh, theory test and you get your driver's license similarly of course if you want to be a pilot no one is just going to let you sit in an aircraft and start flying an aircraft okay so for that you need to undergo a viva and that is what fetches you a student pilot license which we say or which we call as spl okay so spl as you see is a prerequisite before you join or before you start flying okay spl is offered to you by one of the many flying training organizations one of which we have partnered with as well and there you will be doing your flying training and actually fly a real aircraft i know i know hearing this is also you know i'm sure a lot of you are excited knowing about this but trust me flying an aircraft is just like any other skill okay it is something that you know will get onto you and you'll start loving it the more you do and uh, that whole childhood dream is something that you can easily achieve okay the part towards that is not very difficult so coming back to spl so spl stand for student pilot license which is the first step towards your goal okay a student pilot license can be achieved from any flying training organization and we will be doing that for you and you need a minimum of 16 years and a qualification of minimum 10th standard in order to get this license okay now before your spl there is one thing that i would suggest you personally to do is get your medical fitness done okay now as a pilot it is very uh, important for you to be healthy and by healthy it's not that okay i am saying that i am healthy because i think i'm healthy okay that doesn't work there are certain criteria that we have to fulfill in order for the uh, civil aviation operator to know that okay this guy is actually healthy and that are tests that you do there are different medicals in order to which you need to go through medical examinations you need to go through not actual written examinations you know physical tests that you need to go through in order to get yourself a class 2 fitness certificate okay there are different categories of licenses as a pilot you have to only worry about two you have a class 2 fitness certificate and a class 1 okay a initial aspiring pilot will undergo a class 2 medical fitness test okay these are simple tests there is nothing difficult over here just like if you have done a, a yearly medical okay most of the families most of the people here i'm sure they do their medicals okay now when you go through a medical what all checkup do you do you, you do a blood test you do a basic urine routine you do an x ray okay or <clears throat> you do an audiogram to know whether your uh, hearing ability and everything is within the margins okay you do a simple ent test all of these things are the same that you would undergo in a class 2 now there are certain class 2 medical examiners that are there there are present uh, all over the country and we also will fetch you one and we will get your class 2 done properly with the proper streamlined flow okay because again there are a lot of things that you go to a certain doctor he might tell you to do tests which are unnecessary okay dgca that is the governing authority that stands for director general of civil aviation manages every single regulation and every single operator maybe it be an airline may it be a general aviation company or may it be a flying institute like us okay all of them come under dgc and dgc governs them and sees whether they are following the correct rules regulations and they are maintaining the proper safety standards okay they have laid down a procedure for your class 2 medical and you have to do a class 2 medical according to those parameters if your health Uh, factors and everything related to the test are within those parameters the dgc will issue you an class 2 medical once you get a class 2 medical only then i would personally recommend you to take step into the field okay because if you are medically unfit due to whatsoever reason it will be very difficult you might get a temporary unfit certificate but then that is like a hurdle in the beginning itself so it's very very recommended that you first undergo a medical which again as i mentioned Uh, the college and ourselves will look after once you join the course okay now as i said the educational requirement or criteria that is required for spl is 10th standard minimum so i'm sure most of you here have uh, cleared that and you need to be and you need to have at least 16 years of age okay after that the student pilot license is no written exam it's a simple viva for which we will prepare you during your first semester examinations and once you appear for that viva the we will provide you with a student pilot license which will give you the privilege to start flying a real aircraft 
okay now don't think that you'll directly start flying those big jumbo jets that you guys usually travel in that's not how it works you start with a small light engine aircraft which i'll show it to you in a moment and then proceed on to a higher category as you progress through your career okay once you have a spl you can start flying as a trainee pilot okay so yeah you get that trainee pilot and i'm sure all of a lot of you have seen pilots wearing the three stripe applets right so you can get one of them okay once you get your spl so yeah that's also something that i'm sure a lot of you would be looking forward to because the uniform is catchy okay any uniform is catchy and i think being a pilot is one of the few jobs where you actually get a uniform Okay. Otherwise, most of the jobs are, you know, really great jobs like serving the country, being a policeman, being in the army, or most of the government jobs at higher posts get a uniform. But in uh, for the general public, I think this is one of the few professions where you get to wear such a nice uniform. Okay. Coming back to the second category that is private pilot license. Okay. Private pilot license is aimed towards people who want to pursue aviation, but not commercially or not from a professional point of view okay so let's say that uh, your parents had a dream of becoming a pilot but then they switched their careers and now they are doing something great but they still have that thing that i wanted to fly so for such people the private pilot license is the correct thing okay so it's usually i call it it's aimed towards hobby flyers okay so if you have a private pilot license, you can, the requirements for private pilot license are way less than CPL because of course CPL is a commercial one. You get to fly and you're a professional pilot. You can earn through that. Okay. You can get a salary from an operator through that. So it's a proper career option. PPL is just for leisure purpose. It's usually aimed towards people who want to just have the joy of flying. Okay. Anyone can do it. Anyone, your father, anyone, anyone who has a class to medical can go and get a PPL. A PPL license usually does not take more than six to eight months. And it only requires 40 hours of flight time experience. Flight time experience means flight time training that you will do after your <coughs> SPL license. And once you have an SPL license. And also, of course, you have to clear some theory exams, which we'll talk about later in the uh, session. Okay. If you have cleared your examinations, you have done your flying DGCA will offer you and issue you a pilot license, just like they issue you, just like any other government authority issues, you various licenses, or even your passport for that matter. Okay. You fulfill the requirements. Everything is proper. You get the license. Now PPL gives you a privilege to fly. Okay. But it does not give you the privilege to fly commercially or to fly for any type of remuneration back. So you can't work for someone. Okay. There is a lot of students have this doubt that, or they see this term PPL online and they're like, Acha, private pilot license means I can fly for a private airline. That doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You cannot fly for a charter company or something, which is not doing a scheduled flying like Indigo or other airlines. These airlines are taking passengers and they are like proper airlines. Then there are private flights. Like you might have seen, you know, film stars and all going around in their own charter plane. So just because it's a private flight doesn't mean that if you have a PPL, you can fly that. Okay. That's a misconception that a lot of students have. PPL is aimed only towards hobby flying okay, or to fly for yourself. If you have a PPL, you can rent an aircraft, take your family around, but you cannot work for someone or cannot earn through that license. Okay. <coughs> Then comes the main category for which we are here to guide you. That is commercial pilot license. Okay. Commercial pilot license is your main license through which you will get a job as a commercial pilot, either in a charter company or in an airline. Okay. And along with that, when you do your BSc aviation degree, that, uh, your job is even more secured because you're now a graduate holder along with having a CPL license with you. The minimum requirement age, age requirement is 18 years of age. Now that is at the time of issue. Now your course is already three years long. Okay. So even if you start right after your 12th, by the time you finish your degree course, you're already over 18. Okay. I'm sure majority of the, uh, <clears throat> students are there in that, that way. Now, when you talk about CPL at the time of issue, as I mentioned, you need a total uh, 200 hours of flying. And along with that, it takes around for the license around two years to complete. And alongside that simultaneously, you will also be doing what you will be doing your BSc in aviation. 
you need a total of 200 flowers of flying training experience and along with that you have to clear a lot of examinations again as i said which we'll talk about later okay once both these things are done that's when you go and get your cpl license the educational requirements are 10 plus 2 with physics and maths compulsory but that does not mean if any one of you are from commerce stream you will not get the license you will still get the license but as i said you will have to go through physics and maths from any equivalent board or any equivalent recognized uh, institute okay nios is also one thing or if you have if you have pcm if you have physics and maths in your 12th you're well and good to start with your training both your bsc aviation training as well as your commercial pilot license training okay so so that is about the main the three main categories of licenses let's head on to the next question jai on to you okay so captain shreyansh has now explained you about what is the difference between a student pilot license what is the difference between what is a private pilot license and what is the difference between a commercial pilot license okay the next question which we will be discussing okay is which license is best for you okay as an aspiring pilot now anyone who flies in aircraft okay may be as a student may be as a private pilot or may be as a commercial pilot okay each of this particular license makes you a pilot anyone who flies in aircraft is a pilot but which license will be the best for you if you are aspiring to start flying an aircraft okay the first license which you should get is the student pilot license that will be the first license you will be holding okay that is going to help you in order to start your flying training okay that is just for your training purposes the second license which you will get okay will be either if you want to become a commercial pilot that is if you want to fly for airlines you need to earn money out of it you want to do flying as a profession you want to fly an aircraft for airlines for other private companies then you should go for commercial pilot license training or if you want to fly an aircraft just for your hobby or just for your uh, just as a passion just something which you don't want to earn out of you have done your training or you have done something else in your profession professionally you are doing something else but if you want to just learn flying and you want to hold a hold a license then you should go for your private pilot license but i think so most of you guys students over here okay our 12th students or who are doing that 12th standard or just completing their graduation so mainly you are looking aviation as a profession so the main license which you you guys should be thinking about is the commercial pilot license and along with your commercial pilot license especially the students who are doing their 11th standard and their 12th standard they should be thinking about their commercial pilot license along with bsc aviation training okay on the next question which we are going to discuss about the commercial pilot license and uh, bsc aviation is what all things are there in terms of doing your commercial pilot license in india and doing your commercial pilot license training abroad okay many people think about ki agar pilot training karna hai if i want to do pilot training okay we can get it done abroad also in foreign countries also okay but what all things you need to consider when you consider doing your training in india and what all things you need to consider when you doing training in abroad countries okay maybe usa maybe canada okay many people many students as young aspiring pilots have that thing ki why to do it in india let's go abroad let's go to the us and get that training done from there okay but what are the disadvantages of doing training from abroad countries okay we are going to discuss that first thing is on screen as you can see is the cost of training okay now the cost of training of doing commercial pilot license in india along with your bsc aviation would go somewhere between 38 lakh rupees to 40 lakh rupees plus or minus 1 2 lakh rupees okay and that will be you will be spending that money in inr if any of you guys want to do your training in abroad countries you guys know that you will have to convert your inr to dollars which you will be spending a lot of money into okay so the cost of training which you do which you spend in abroad countries might go somewhere around 50 lakh rupees or 60 lakh rupees which will be any day 10 to 15 lakh rupees more than what it is in doing in your own country that is in india second factor which you need to consider is the duration of training now abroad countries if you go to any country abroad and get your training done from abroad countries okay it will take anywhere between 6 
eight months to 10 months to 12 months to complete your pilot training. Okay, and that will be only your pilot training. You will not be not getting your BSc aviation degree if you do your pilot training from abroad countries. Okay, while if you do your pilot training from India, okay, you can complete the pilot training within the same amount of time. And along with that, you can also pursue your BSc aviation degree, which will not just make you a competent pilot, but also a graduate. So educationally speaking, you will be a pilot license holder. And along with that, you will also be a graduation degree holder from the BSc AV, uh, sorry, correction, from the University of Mumbai, okay? As far as the examinations and difficulty is concerned, okay, most of the flying training which happens across the world, anywhere, whichever country you go to, okay, the difficulty level will remain the same, okay? You cannot expect that pilot abroad usko kam padai karna padega, ya pilot India mein usko zyada padai karna padega. Pilot kahin par bhi ho. The pilot has to go through the same amount of educational uh, qualification they have to go to the same amount of syllabus they have to study the same pattern they have to study the same uh, they need to have the same knowledge which anywhere across the world a pilot should have okay so as far as the educational qualification educational requirement or theory examinations or difficulties concerned okay the difficulty level in india or any abroad countries okay it remains the same okay one of the most disadvantage of doing your pilot training in abroad countries is that as an Indian citizen, okay, majority of you guys, I think every one of you guys right now attending this meeting is an Indian citizen, okay? And your aspiration is to fly for an airlines belonging to India. For example, you have to fly for Indigo, you have to fly for Vistara, you have to fly for Air India, ke liye flying karna hai, okay? So if you want to fly for any of this airline which are established in India, you need to have an Indian license. If you do your training from any of the abroad countries, okay, you will not have an Indian license. Now, if you want to get an Indian license, you will have to get it converted to the Indian license. Now, the process of conversion is very lengthy. It takes a lot of time and it also consumes a lot of money from your pocket. Okay, so the best thing is get your training done in India, get your license in India and work for a company which is in India. Later on, as you get an experience, as you become an experienced pilot, okay, later on, then you can opt for companies or airlines which are situated abroad. Okay, many of you guys may be thinking you have Emirates ke liye flying karna hai, mujhe Etihad ke liye flying karna hai. First company which will give you a job will be an Indian registered company like Endigo, like Vistara, like Air India. And later on, as you become an experienced pilot, Later on, as you become a asset to the company, then you can choose for any other airlines abroad also. Okay. Now, as far as vacancies are concerned, as I just mentioned, okay, jobs and vacancies are concerned. As an Indian national, as a person who is having a nationality in India, okay, only companies which were going to give you a job or only company which are as a career perspective are going to be Indian companies. Okay, that may be flying clubs in India, that may be other airlines in India. So even if you get your license from abroad countries, you will have to get it converted in order to get a job in India to fly as a pilot. Last point of this particular topic, that is flight schools and its credibilities. Okay. Now, if you are doing your flying training in India or for just that matter, any other training, just say most of you guys are doing your 11th standard and 12th standard. Aapke saamne aapka college hai, aapke saamne aapke instructors hai, aapke saamne aapke university hai. Okay, you know the university, you know the physical existence of this university. Okay, if anything goes wrong in the university, if you think that something has not been taught to you, you can directly go to the teacher and ask for them to teach that thing again to you. But if you offer any flying schools abroad, and if some mishap happens or if something happens to the flying school or the credibility of the flying school, okay, so what will you do after you come back to India? Okay, once you have come back to India and if the flying school is blacklisted, there is nothing that can be done about it. Okay, you will have to do your flying training again. You will have to do your graduation again. Okay, so as far as flying schools and credibility is concerned, if you are doing your training in India or if you are doing your training from any of the institute which is registered in India, okay, that will be the best option you, you can have or that will be the best option you can choose from in order to become a pilot or in order to become a BSc aviation holder in the future. Okay. So these are the points which you need to consider, okay, when you are thinking about where you should do your flying training from, okay, whether you should do from India or whether you should do from abroad. As far as my opinion is concerned and majority of my colleagues will agree to that, is that the best thing you should do is you should do from the fl flying training which are registered in India and you should do your BSc aviation from a prestigious college which is 
you can see the physical existence of. You should not think about going abroad. You should not think about going to any other countries to do any sort of flying training, maybe CPL, PPL, or any other degree courses. Maybe some other courses, just a master's, you have to do medical, karna hai. maybe many people choose that, but I don't think so. That is also necessary. We have the best of flying training. We have the best of educational facilities available in India. Then why go abroad when you can get the same amount of training, same degree of expertise, and at a cheaper price and in within the less amount of time which you will end up spending over there. Okay, so when you are considering these topics, okay, you have to consider about all of these uh, questions and the best thing to choose is to do your flying training and your graduation from a college which is registered in India and from a college which is affiliated to institutes or universities which is based out of India. Okay, so you can just go to the next question. All right, sure. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is uh, education loans and uh, how much, how can you repay them? Okay. Now, when you talk about flying training, flying training with all of the advantages that it has, that you have a big fat salary, you have a lot of allowances, you get free tickets to go from for your family and yourself. So if with that, of course, the training is also a little expensive. Okay. Now, when you talk about expensive, the on an average flight training in India will cost somewhere around 38 lakhs to 40 lakhs, along with doing your BSc aviation with it. Okay. Now, of course, not all of you might have that amount of money similar to myself. I'm sure Rajdeep and Jayesh as well. Okay. It is required for any type of education. Even if you do engineering, engineering in India somewhere will cost you from around six lakhs to eight lakh, depending on which college you do go do it. If you do it from a better, good college, even much more. Okay. Then you go for your MS and all that will cost you another easy 40 to 60 lakhs. Again, depending on what university abroad you get admission into. Okay. So at the end of the course, you will easily spend up around 50 to 60 lakhs, even while you're doing engineering. When you talk about medical, it is even more expensive. Okay. Doing a medical degree, even becoming an MBBS doctor is way more expensive. And the amount of studies that you have to do is also a lot. Okay. You take up architecture, you take up MBA, a simple MBA from a good college will cost you somewhere around 15 to 20 lakhs in today's time. Okay. And the returns, the returns again, depend on where you get a job. If you get a job. Okay. When you talk about aviation, as I said, it will cost you around 35 to 40 lakhs in order to get your aviation degree done. But along with that, you'll also get a big fat salary. Okay. Now, if you do not have funds ready in order to invest that much money in, into your training, there are options of education loans. And I'm going to talk about how they work. Okay. Education loans are uh, given for CPL and we being an uh, approved and uh, recognized college. Along with Alartevari, we can also go ahead and uh, fetch you a loan if you require during your training for whatsoever reason. There are various uh, nationalized banks that offer loans at really good cost effective rate of interest, which ranges from around 6.9 to around 9%, uh, depending on what your uh, liabilities are and so on. Okay. Now, of course, getting education loans sometimes might require some collateral. And uh, if you have any doubts with respect to that, you can reach us out the college or us directly, and we'll help you that if you're interested in pilot training later on after your 12th standard. Okay. <clears throat> Now, these are the requirements, as you can see on the screen, which are the documentation requirements usually required. Now, if you're going to take any loan, of course, a scrutiny will happen depend. And mostly since you're uh, a student, it will be your parents will be taking care of all of these documentation. So it's not something that is uh, not known. Every single bank, every single loan is processed in the very same way. Now, as I was talking about medical earlier, let's talk a little bit in depth of how medicals are conducted. Now, as I said that when you want to become a pilot, the first thing that I would recommend you as a commercial pilot is to do your medical. Okay. A medical as of two types, you have a class one medical and a class two medical class one medical is required later after two years. Class two medical has to be done before you join for the course. Okay. The class two medicals, the tests that are taken are uh, put down over here. As you can see, you have an ECG, an X-ray, an ultrasound, that is your sonography basically, an audiometry test in order to check how well you can hear. So if you're use, if you're someone who uses earphones or something, I would highly recommend you to stop using that if you want, if or if you have a dream of becoming a pilot in the future. Along with that, you have other pathology tests like a blood test, a simple CVC, a urine test, 
basic blood pressure a bmi check this is another thing that uh, is important that you should or you need to be in the proper bmi range okay if you are a little overweight or a little underweight that's well and good they do not ever fail you medical unless and until there is some permanent issue with you okay otherwise if there are certain things like if you are as i said if you are a little overweight or a little underweight they will give you a whole year or two years in order to get that sorted okay then you have a basic eye test people with glasses can become pilots okay this is a myth there in the market people with glasses can become pilots i wear glasses but these are just blue reflective rays i don't have a number rajdeep there has a number okay and he's a pilot he's a commercial pilot with us okay so i test if you have corrective lenses and you can see with them you can be a pilot you should have 6 by 6 vision with corrective lenses and that is completely fine so do not go ahead or do not have this thing in mind that okay if i have glasses i cannot be a pilot you can be a pilot you do not need to do any type of surgery or lasik surgery in order to get rid of your glasses okay if at all there is something that comes in your medical fitness test that maybe is up and up and down you can get a temporary unfit certificate but later on they will give you a time period after which you can surely go ahead and do your medical once again okay any additional tests that are required apart from this could be for reasons that uh, you know you're a little bit medically unfit your parameters are a little up and down so this is mainly about the medical and as i said it is a very important aspect not only as an aspiring pilot but also as a commercial pilot later later in your career because every single year me myself or any other pilot in this country or outside the country has to renew his medical on a annual basis okay i let in fact i just got my medical renewed last week so every year you have to renew this so you have to be healthy you have to be fit and fine and take care of your health as a pilot and as you progress through your career okay another very important part that is about documentation okay now since flying or being a pilot is such a a job of responsibility and also about safety okay and not only your safety but also 180 other passengers that are sitting behind you so for that government or any authority that is giving you or issuing you that license needs to know that all the all of the documentation requirements and everything are properly fulfilled okay i have uh, jotted down a few important things that are required and these are mandatory okay number 1 while you are putting up or while you are taking admission of course you will need an applicant photograph along with that your 10th and 12th cert uh, certificates and mark sheets now i know that a lot of students get their mark sheets uh, passing certificates later especially those who are doing it from the maharashtra state board or the state board and that is well and good you can give your mark sheets later on once you fetch them after 2 3 months once your results are out you need a lc of course and you need a certain identification proofs could be aadhar card passport anything which has your correct name and photo id along with that important documents which are specific to flying training and which we will take care and help you and guide you on how to fetch them is something called as a board verification certificate now i know that mark sheet or a mark sheet is enough for us or any other college to know that okay you have cleared your 10 plus 2 but when you talk about commercial pilot license training the dgca is not okay with just getting that okay you need to get your board certificate <coughs> both mark sheet and the passing certificate verified again from your board and it is not a very difficult task it's very simple all you have to do is go to your respective board office which again we will guide you for and issue a copy of your medical and within 10 to 15 days they will give you a certificate written that okay we have authenticated your mark sheets and certificates and they are found to be correct okay why this is required because in the past i think maybe 6 7 years ago there have been instances where dgca has uh, come across frauds that have been done by people who have not actually cleared their education through science stream who are from commerce and you know they had given fake certificates which later were found out so after that they request every single student or aspiring pilot who is wanting to uh, get their cpl to get their certificates verified from their respective boards okay and then the most important part is your police clearance <coughs> or security clearance certificate when you go for a passport when you go to get a passport i'm sure a lot of you have to go to the local police station in order to get yourself verified it is a very same thing okay 
in in mumbai since majority of you i'm sure are from mumbai it is a very very simple task okay everything is online there is a portal of a uh, Mumbai police where you go you fill up all your details upload your aadhar card and then they will allot you a date you go to a nearest police station verify yourself and online only you can get a police clearance certificate this is important without this you will never get a license issued because as i said it is a matter of safety who they are uh, issuing the license to okay if you are being a pilot your criminal record should be clear So if you have any criminal record, I'm sorry, you cannot be a pilot at least now till the point that that record has been cleared. Okay, so that is what PCC stands for. Okay, so sure. going on to the next one, choosing the right flying club, and this is exactly where Jayesh comes in since he handles our flying club wing, and we'll talk about our collaboration and where you will be doing your flying school and uh, what all other facilities that you'll get. On to you, Jayesh. okay so now when we are discussing okay while we choose the flying club which will be best for us okay there are various points which which we need to consider okay so in in general okay what as normal students consider is that okay there are two main aspects okay first the cost at which he will be paying to the flying club okay what will be the expenses he will be dealing with okay how much amount he have to spend in order to become a pilot and the second thing is the most important which i think is the most important is the quality of training okay even if you are even if you have to spend even a few pennies more but the quality of training is better okay you should spend that extra money okay to get a better quality of training because a better quality of training assures you a better job in a better company which assures you a better career prospect which assures you better salary and a better life in the future okay so not to think about the money or not not to think about the expense okay you have to think about the quality of training and the facilities obviously which are available at that particular flying school when you are choosing that particular flying school like you guys all are joining this meeting are obviously affiliated somehow the other way with lr tiwari college okay we all know it's one of the best college out there in the city for all the courses which they are providing okay similarly when we will be starting with bsc aviation it will be the best out of all of the colleges in the city okay just a bsc aviation ke liye lr tiwari college will be the best to do your bsc aviation from similarly you will be also affiliated and you will be also sent to the best flying institutes in the country to do your flying training from okay so anything which you are doing from us okay it will be from the best okay lr tiwari college is the best way be will be the best for bsc aviation obviously and at the same time where the flying clubs which will be doing your flying from will be the best in the country now when you consider your flying training okay you have to first thing obviously as i said is the fees okay the cost of flying or the fees now the cost of flying in flying clubs across the country can vary from 35 36 lakhs and can go up to 40 lakhs also some of the flying clubs can go even beyond that can go up to 45 50 lakhs also okay so we don't have to go into the most expensive one but at the same time we don't have to go into the most cheaper one because okay the most expensive one are too costly the most cheaper one the quality of training is not as good okay we have to think about the flying club which are good at flying training also and which are good at reasonable also okay they are fairly reasonable also okay second thing which you need to consider is the quality and the types of aircraft okay you're flying an aircraft guys you have to understand it's not like driving a car aapke car ka tire puncture ho gaya aap kya karte ho gaadi side mein laga di tire change kar diya aapke tire car ka engine fail agar kharab ho gaya dhua aa raha hai car mein se aap kya karte ho car side mein laga diya aapne mechanic ko bula ke repair kar diya car but imagine you're flying an aircraft at 10000 feet up in the sky and your engine starts failing or there is smoke coming out of your engine what will you do then okay you cannot afford flying an aircraft which is not properly maintained which is of below par quality okay you have to think about the best aircraft you have to think about the uh, most brand new aircraft and the aircraft which will offer you the best quality of training okay second third thing which you consider is whether this particular flying club has multi engine aircrafts available with them or not okay in future when you become pilots okay in future when you fly aircrafts you must have seen do do engines hote hain aircraft mein ek engine thodi hota hai ye jo bade aircraft airline mein hai inme do engines hai okay that means aapko do engine aircraft fly karne ki training honi chahiye okay you should be trained to fly two engine aircraft okay those are multi engine aircraft now at present even if there are 30 34 flying clubs in india hardly 6 to 7 flying clubs have multi engine aircraft with them 
Okay, the rest of the flying clubs have single engine aircraft, which are, yes, needed for your training, but they do not complete your training. Okay, so you should opt for a flying club which has multi-engine and single engine aircraft both so that your training is completed in a complete package. Okay, one thing, another thing, as a pilot, you are trained on simulators. Her flying club ke pas simulator available nahi hota. You should choose a flying club which have simulator facilities available, okay, which have operational airports available. Okay, which have a certain number of instructors available with you. But actually, aircrafts are very many, but instructors are available. Nahi hai. Who will train you to fly those aircrafts? Okay, the more aircrafts are, the more competent and quality instructors are flying club ke paas available. Honi okay, similarly, ground classes facilities are available hai ya nahi hai. How are they connected to major cities? How are they connected to major airports? Okay, how is the flying around throughout the, how is the weather throughout the year at those particular flying clubs? Just say, for example, if you come out of Mumbai, you know that Mumbai mein char mein to flying karna almost impossible hai. because four months we have monsoon in Mumbai. And when we have monsoon in Mumbai, there are clouding, there is thundering, there is lightning, there is heavy rains which are happening. Okay, do you want to fly? Especially when you're training as a commercial pilot, you will be trained. Aapko pata hai kaise fly karna is barish mein. But when you're training, when you're becoming a pilot, okay, you want to fly in weather which is clear, which is fair, okay, where there is not a lot of clouds, not lighting, no rainfall which is happening. You should choose a flying club where weather ek fair weather hota hai, clear weather hota hai throughout the year. Okay. Then you should also consider when you're choosing the flying club, like Obviously, with uh, LR Tewari College, you must have seen. Up alumni, they take this particular college. Ki. Ki, zyada students is college se pass out hue and where are they placed? How much they are earning? Obviously, all of the students, most of the students coming out of this college have joined prestigious companies, have joined prestigious, have developed their startups, are now entrepreneurs, are doing good in their professional careers. Similarly, when you are choosing a flying club, also you have to choose a flying club which the students coming out of this flying club have joined prestigious airlines and are doing great in their professional careers as a pilot. Okay. And obviously, thinking about the cost of food and accommodation, also, if I say that the cost of training will be around uh, 35 to 40 lakh rupees, more or less. Okay. At the same time, the cost of food and cost of accommodation is also very important because majority of the flying schools are at remote locations. Okay. You don't want to do your training in Mumbai because Mumbai is so busy that you don't have time to fly. 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 You don't have time And then once you are trained, then you will be brought to. Uh, major airport and airport where traffic is very much and where you have to deal multiple aircrafts. Ke deal karna hai. So similarly, if you are going to remote places, pe ja ke training kar rahe ho, you have cost of food or cost of uh, accommodation be considered. Karna hai okay? Now one of the flying clubs which we are affiliated with and which once you join us for BSC Aviation, we will be sending you for your flying training is right now doing the best in the country. Okay, once you get associated with us, once we join for BSC Aviation, we will be informing you about your concept flying club hai, and your kaha par hai, and your kitne aircrafts hai, and all of those things. Okay, but when you are considering right now, okay, to choose a flying club, you should be considering all of these points when you are choosing a flying school. Some flying school might sound very fancy. But expensive zada honge. Some file crew might sound very reasonable, but quality of training bhoat kam hoge. So, yeh saare jo factors aapke saamne abhi screen ke upar hai, you have to consider all of these factors when you are choosing a flying school. Right now, at present in India, there are 34 registered flying schools. Uh, but out of this 34 flying school, there are hardly 7 or 8 flying schools which are competent enough, which are actually good enough that we would refer you guys or we would refer you or we would send you guys to do their training. I personally don't go to this flying school, I have flying school, I personally don't go to that aircraft. Because I know that this aircraft can never be able to do it. So you don't have to risk and do this kind of things, okay? Just because that flying club is uh, reasonable or comparatively cheaper, okay? Even if you have to spend a few lakh rupees more, it's okay because it's about your life, it's about your quality of training and it's about your profession as a pilot in the future. Okay, so I think whoever are attending all the students, you should take a note of all these points that these are the points which you should consider when you're choosing a flying school. Like you're choosing the best best college right now, LR Tiwari, one of the best college in the city. So similarly, when you flying school, we consider karoge, you have to choose for the best out of those flying schools also. Okay, what do you say? You can continue this. Okay. 
सो नाउ एज अ पायलट एज एन एस्पायरिंग पायलट जब हम पायलट बनने की बात करते हैं राइट नाउ यू ग्रेजुएशन आप फिजिक्स पढ़ रहे हो आप केमिस्ट्री पढ़ रहे हो आप इंग्लिश पढ़ रहे हो आप बायोलॉजी पढ़ रहे हो एज अ पायलट वॉट आर दब्जेक्ट विच यू नीड टू स्टडी अबाउट ओके वॉट आर दब्जेक्ट विच यू नीड टू हैव कमांड ओवर एज अ पायलट मुझे बायोलॉजी से कोई लेना देना नहीं है एज अ पायलट मुझे शायद केमिस्ट्री से कोई लेना देना नहीं है बट वॉट आर दब्जेक्ट विच अ पायलट नीड्स टू नो अबाउट are the one which you see on screen okay the two main subjects which a pilot needs to know the most or 50% is air navigation now what is air navigation air navigation is a subject which teaches a pilot how to go from one place to another how to navigate yourself from one place to another imagine flying over the pacific ocean jahan pe thousands and thousands of kilometer tak sirf pani hai और आपको लेफ्ट राइट ना बिल्डिंग है ना सिटी है ना रोड है ना ट्रैक है ना लैंड है सिर्फ पानी एंड पानी फॉर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ थाउजेंड्स ऑफ किलोमीटर्स एक जैसा ही दिखता है अब आपको लंदन से न्यूयॉर्क जाना है एयरक्राफ्ट लेके कैसे जाओगे अगर एक डिग्री भी नोज यहाँ वहां चला गया तो न्यूयॉर्क की जगह कैनेडा पहुंच जाओगे ओके सो इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अ कॉम्पिटेंट पायलट टू नो दैट हाउ टू नेविगेट योर सेल्फ फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अनदर सो दर इज फर्स्ट सब्जेक्ट विच अ पायलट इज टॉट दैट इज नेविगेशन okay the second subject which comes and plays a very important role again is technical pilot tab banoge jab aapko ye samajh mein aayega ki ek aircraft fly kaise karta hai how does an aircraft fly everyone look loves to look at an aircraft in the sky everyone loves to look at an kite which is flying in the sky now how many of you guys know that a kite which has been flying in the sky okay abhi just sankrant hui hai kite aapne fly ki hogi and an aircraft which is flying in the sky is actually flying on the same concept of physics ओके, सो ये जो दोनों एक चीजें फ्लाई कर रही है काइट भी फ्लाई कर रहा है एयरक्राफ्ट भी फ्लाई कर रहा है ईगल भी फ्लाई कर रहा है स्पैरो भी फ्लाई कर रहा है ऑल ऑफ दिस पीपल हुआ फ्लाइंग ऑल ऑफ दिस ऑब्जेक्ट्स व्हिच आर फ्लाइंग आर फ्लाइंग ऑन द सेम कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ फिजिक्स एंड दैट टॉपिक इज टॉट टू अ पायलट वाइल ही इज डूइंग हिज ट्रेनिंग एंड दैट इज कवर्ड अंडर टेक्निकल और वी कॉल इट टेक्निकल चैनल द थर्ड सब्जेक्ट व्हिच अ पायलट इज टॉट इज एविएशन मीटरोलॉजी ओके जैसे हम अभी डिस्कस कर रहे थे मुंबई में बारिश होती है बहुत ज्यादा चार महीने ओके okay. बारिश क्यों होती है क्लाउड्स क्यों फॉर्म होते हैं ओके लाइटनिंग क्यों होती है कैसे फॉर्म होते हैं क्लाउड्स अगर बारिश होने वाली है तो आपको पता है पहले ही प्रेडिक्शन आ जाता है कि मॉनसून होने वाला है थंडरिंग होने वाला है लाइटनिंग होने वाला है ये कैसे पता चल रहे हैं ये जो जो लोग होते हैं इन्हें मीटरोलॉजिस्ट बोलते हैं ओके दीज पीपल आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर नोइंग और प्रेडिक्टिंग द वेदर इन द फ्यूचर ऑब्वियसली दे डू इट एज अ प्रोफेशन okay they are much more skilled in terms of knowing the weather and predicting the weather but as a pilot not to the same extent but as a pilot i should know about weather i should know ki clouds kaun sa cloud mein lightning hoga kaun se cloud mein barish hoga kaun se cloud mein snow hoga i should know about all of these things and that is covered in the third chap topic or third subject which is called as aviation meteorology meteorology is about weather okay navigation is about navigating technical is about the physics of aircraft the physics behind the aircraft flying meteorology is about the weather next subject the fourth subject is regulations air regulations regulations kya rules and regulations of the air pretty simple aap gaadi chala rahe ho raste pe red signal dikhta hai aap ruk jate ho green signal dikhta hai aap chalte ho aage orange signal dikhta hai india mein most of the log accelerate karte hai but you are supposed to slow down Isn't it? Okay, but हमें क्या लगता है ऑरेंज सिग्नल है भगाओ बट इट्स नॉट हाउ इट वर्क ओके यूर सपोज टू स्लो डाउन एंड स्टॉप सो दैट रेड सिग्नल आएगा आप रुक जाओ तो ये क्या है ये रूल्स है आर टी ओ के रूल्स है सिमिलरली फ्लाइंग के भी बहुत सारे रूल्स होते हैं सिमिलरली फ्लाइंग के भी मेनी रूल्स आर देर मेनी रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन आर देर दैट इज कवर्ड अंडर दिस सब्जेक्ट विच इज कॉल्ड एस एयर रेगुलेशन ओके एंड द लास्ट इन द लास्ट नहीं बोल सकते देर इज वन मोर सब्जेक्ट विच इज नॉट देर वन द नेक्स्ट इज कॉल्ड एस टेक्निकल स्पेसिफिक ओके टेक्निकल स्पेसिफिक क्या है अभी आप बी एमडब्ल्यू भी देखते हो आप मर्सिडीज भी देखते हो आप ऑल्टो भी देखते हो आप रोल्स रॉयस भी देखते हो गाड़ी चलाना तो सेम है यू ड्राइव अ रोल्स रॉयस और यू ड्राइव ऑल्टो इट्स द सेम ड्राइविंग इज द सेम बट ईच ऑफ दिस कार हैज डिफरेंट स्पेसिफिकेशन उसका वेट उसका इंजन पावर उसका स्पीड उसका मैन्युफैक्चर एक्सेट्रा 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 ये सारे चीजें उस पर्टिकुलर कार के स्पेसिफिकेशन होते हैं Similarly, each of the aircraft flying in the air, though flies on the same concept, 
of physics, but each of this aircraft will have different specification. Okay, उसके weight, उसका range, उसका endurance, उसका manufacturer, uh, engine किसने बनाया, propeller किसने बनाया, etc. 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 So आपको कौन सा aircraft fly करना? आपको fly करना है जैसे for example you want to join Indigo Airlines. Indigo Airlines has Airbus A320. तो Airbus A320 के specifications अलग हैं. कल जाके आप promote हो जाते हो. You join Emirates. Emirates के पास Airbus A380. तो एयरबस ए थ्री एटी के स्पेसिफिकेशन अलग है सो ऑल ऑफ दोज थिंग्स अबाउट अ स्पेसिफिक टाइप ऑफ एयरक्राफ्ट इज कॉल्ड एस टेक्निकल स्पेसिफिक ओके वेरी सिंपल नेम स्पेसिफिक बिकॉज इट इज स्पेसिफिक टू अ टाइप ऑफ एयरक्राफ्ट एंड लास्टली ओके यस यू हैव टू डील विद रेडियो टेलीफोनी वॉट इज दिस रेडियो टेलीफोनी रेडियो टेलीफोनी इज इफ राइट नाउ आई एम कम्युनिकेटिंग विद यू ओके आई एम यूजिंग इंग्लिश एज अ लैंग्वेज टू कम्युनिकेट समटाइम्स आई यूज हिंदी एज अ लैंग्वेज टू कम्युनिकेट मेनी ऑफ यू गाइज माइट बी यूजिंग योर मदर टंग मराठी गुजराती एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा एज अ पायलट यू के नॉट एक्सपेक्ट मी टू नो रशियन यू के नॉट एक्सपेक्ट मी टू नो स्पेनिश और फ्रेंच और एनी अदर लैंग्वेज बट एज अ पायलट एयर इंडिया तो मुझे लंडन भी भेज रहा है मुझे सेंट पीटर्सबर्ग भी भेज रहा है मुझे अर्जेंटीना भी भेज रहा है मुझे कनाडा भी भेज रहे हैं तो अभी मैं क्या यहाँ सबकी लैंग्वेज पढ़ूंगा ऑब्वियसली नॉट देर इज वन लैंग्वेज विच ऑल द पायलट अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड हैव टू लर्न ओके तो आप इंडिया में फ्लाई करो या यूएसए में करो या रशिया में करो या फ्रांस में करो या अर्जेंटीना में करो एक ही लैंग्वेज है एंड दैट लैंग्वेज इज कॉल्ड एस रेडियो टेलीफोनी सो ईच ऑफ द पायलट नीड्स टू हैव कमांड ओवर दिस लैंग्वेज दैट इज कॉल्ड एस रेडियो टेलीफोनी इज ऑब्वियसली बेस्ड ऑन इंग्लिश बट इज नॉट Completely English. आपने सुना होगा अल्फा ब्रावो चार्ली और विल्को रॉजर ऑल ऑफ दिस टर्म्स आर द टर्म्स और दिस फ्रेजेस विच आर यूज इन रेडियो टेलीफोनी तो एज अ पायलट यू डोंट हैव लर्न बेसिकली फिजिक्स और बायोलॉजी और मैथमेटिक्स तो अगर आपको किसी को लगता है कि सर मेरे को ना इंटीग्रेशन डेरिवेटिव नहीं आता मैं पायलट बन सकता हूँ बिल्कुल बन सकता हूँ एज अ पायलट यू डोंट नीड टू एक्चुअली यूज इंटीग्रेशन डेरिवेटिव कि सर मेरा केमिस्ट्री थोड़ा वीक है बिल्कुल बन सकते हो कि सर मेरा फिजिक्स uh, में थोड़ा वीक है ओके okay? फिजिक्स की थोड़ी बहुत ज्यादा जरूरत है बट इवन इफ इट्स वीक यू कैन स्टिल बिकम अ पायलट बिकॉज एज यू सी सब्जेक्ट्स इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू यू डोंट यू डोंट हैव फिजिक्स मैथ्स और केमिस्ट्री यू हैव एयर नेविगेशन यू हैव टेक्निकल जनरल यू हैव मीटरोलॉजी रेगुलेशन टेक्निकल स्पेसिफिक एंड रेडियो टेलीफोन ओके इट्स जस्ट एलिजिबिलिटी क्राइटेरिया विच सेज यू नीड टू हैव टेन प्लस टू विथ फिजिक्स एंड मैथ बट फिजिक्स एंड मैथ्स में पास हो गए 50% आ आ गए गए या 50, 60, 70% जितने भी मोर देन आप आप इसके बाद फ्यूचर में अ अ पायलट कभी इंटीग्रेशन नहीं करने वाले आप एज अ पायलट कभी केमिस्ट्री एच टू एस ओ फोर एंड ऑल ऑफ दो थिंग्स नहीं करने वाले और आप कभी फॉर एग्जांपल फ्यूचर में कभी फिजिक्स uh, के थियरम जो होते हैं फिजिक्स के जो भी सम्स होते हैं वो आप सोल्व नहीं करने वाले यू विल बी डूंग नेविगेशन नेविगेशन के सम्स करोगे आप टेक्निकल समझोगे आप रेगुलेशन समझोगे आप मीटरोलॉजी समझोगे So these are subject, and the best part about this subject is when you do BSc Aviation along with your pilot training. Okay, same subjects are done for BSc Aviation. Okay, so आपको दो अलग-अलग चीजें नहीं पढ़नी पड़ेगी. Okay, you don't have to study. Uh, एक में आप statistics पढ़ रहे हो और दूसरी जगह pilot training कर रहे हो. या फिर एक जगह आप analytical chemistry कर रहे हो और दूसरी जगह pilot training कर रहे हो. तो chemistry भी पढ़ो, pilot training भी पढ़ो. You don't have to do that. You will become a graduate. and you will become a pilot by just studying the same five subjects which you are seeing on the screen in front of you okay so pilot training ke liye bhi yahi subjects padhne hain aur bsc aviation ke liye bhi yahi subjects padhne hain so when you will complete your graduation and you will complete your pilot training aur aapke sath ke jo dusre log jo se graduation kar rahe honge maybe physics mein maybe chemistry mein okay unke paas graduation ki degree to hogi definitely but aapke paas ek pilot ka license bhi hoga aap graduate to hoi and at the same time you have a pilot license along with that Okay, so that is the advantage of doing your pilot training along with your BSc Aviation. That you don't have to study two different things at the same time. You have to do the same thing, the same subjects, the same syllabus. One pilot ke liye aur dusra BSc Aviation ke liye. Okay, moving on. All right, thank you, Jesh. All right. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is the distribution of flying training. Okay. Now, as I to as Jayesh mentioned about the subjects. Now, flying training. When you do a commercial pilot license training, there are two phases to it. One is your subjects that we just spoke about, which are the theory exams. Now, subjects. So, I have seen theory exams are all MCQ type. 
Okay. So you do not have to write anything. What you would usually do in any other degree course, you don't have to write. It's not long answers. It's simple MCQs. The only catch over here is that there are hundred marks papers. So every subject has a separate paper and you only have to appear or uh, clear it once. Okay. Of course, for your BSc aviation, you will follow the same pattern that you'll be following since your school and college life. There you have to study the same subjects and there it will be theory. But again, the whole syllabus is not in one semester. Okay. So if I'm studying air navigation, air navigation has a certain number of chapters. In BSc aviation, let's say there are 40 chapters in air navigation. Those 40 chapters are divided in three years. Whereas in CPL, you give those 40 chapters in one MCQ paper. If you clear it, you're done. Okay. So that is one thing. Now coming back to the second phase, that is your flying training. Now, when you talk about flying training, you have to do a total of 200 hours of flying. Okay. 200 hours are done in a span of around eight to 10 months from our flying training partner. Talking about how these 200 hours are divided out of the 200 hours, hundred hours have to be flown solo. Now solo or we, as we call it PIC, PIC means pilot in command. Okay. So you will fly that aircraft solely by yourself and you will get, you will do that once you are released solo from by your instructor. Okay. Just like someday you were not able to walk. Then you slowly started to learn, learn to walk. Then your parents didn't have to hold your hand every single time. Similarly here, once you start with your flying training, you do a certain amount of hours and the instructor is then confident. Okay. This guy can now fly the aircraft solo. He will release you solo. And then you have to do a total of hundred hours like that. Out of the total hundred hours solo, you have to do 50 hours of cross country flying. Now cross country flying does not mean you go from one country to another. It means you go from one airport to another with a minimum distance of around 200 kilometers. Okay. So from wherever you're doing your flying, you go from one place to another. And that is when you do a total of 50 hours of cross country flying. Then you have another important part that is 40 hours of instrument flying. What is instrument flying instrument flying? Now, when you're flying, I'm sure when you look outside, sometimes the weather is very hazy fog, aata hai. you know, you can't see ahead. Even sometimes when you're going to some hill station and all, it's all foggy and you can barely see what's ahead of your car on the road. Similarly, while you're flying, this situation can occur. Okay, when you're flying, there can be situations when you're inside a cloud or you have to completely rely on instruments. Otherwise, when you're flying at night, kuch nahi ka bahar ka. Okay. In that case, you have to rely on your instrument and just focus on them and understand how to read them and interpret each instrument and learn to fly. That is what we call as instrument flying. This is an amazing experience. Instrument flying is one of my favorites and you have to do a total of 40 hours of instrument flying in your total 200 hours. Okay. Then there are various checks that you have to do that you have to fly a total of 300 nautical miles Now nautical miles is a unit that we use in aviation. It is approximately, you can say twice that of a kilometer. Okay. You have to also pursue night flying. What is night flying? Night flying is of course flying at night. You have to do a certain hours of night flying, usually 10 hours of <coughs> night flying along with this, as Jayesh mentioned earlier, you can have multi-engine flying as well, which will be an added bonus on your resume. Okay. So this is how whole of your flying training is taken care of. Now, when you start with your course, as you start in your flying phase, once you reach your flying phase after your first semester, all of this will be taken care of by the flying school where you do your flying training. <coughs> Next talking about multi-engine rating. As I mentioned, or as Jayesh mentioned earlier, there are different categories of aircraft. There are single engine aircraft, which have only one engine, one propeller in front of you. And majority of your flying training is done on that. Usually approximately out of 200 hours of your flying training, 185 hours is done on single engine. The next 15 hours is a requirement for majority of the airlines in India or across the world. Okay. You need a multi-engine rating and that is where multi-engine comes into. There are various types of multi-engine aircraft present in the country. However, as Jayesh mentioned that out of 34 flying training organizations, only five or six actually have multi-engines with them. Okay. And the one that we will be sending you to has in fact, two different types of multi-engines that they cater for. Okay. There are, this has only, this only takes around 15 to 20 days in your whole training duration. And you have to do a total of 25 hours of flying training. Out of these 25 hours, 15 hours will be flown on an actual multi-engine aircraft. It's amazing. It has a lot of power and you'll have a very completely different experience within your flying training. And then you have a total of 
10 hours which you do on your simulator okay you might have seen simulators you know you go to malls and all you have those car simulators racing and all similarly there are flight simulators as well on which you can practice every single scenario that you would otherwise not really be able to practice on board you see you can't actually go and do a engine failure while you fly okay but you can study about how to you know react to an engine failure on ground in an actual simulator okay so that is what is done when you do your single engine flying now next thing that we are going to talk about is what are the different <coughs> job options that you can choose after your cpl now this is a very very important question as a lot of people in india think that only become after becoming a commercial pilot all i can do is fly commercially in an airline and there is nothing other to do other than that okay like i can't get i can't earn through any other way or anything that's wrong okay of course the highest the your aim should be to become an airline pilot but before that before you go to become going to become an, an airline pilot there are other things that you can pursue okay now airline vacancies in current times due to covid have been a little low but since in 2023 since tata just took over air india there are so many new vacancies going to come in akasha airline and this is going to come in very shortly again a big streak of vacancies will be coming in and at that time if you are ready which is the correct time right now to start so that you are ready by the time all of these vacancies coming you can get a job very easily apart from being an airline pilot the next job that you can do is become a ground instructor okay ground instructor is someone who will be actually instructing you when you start or when you pursue the course as a commercial pilot if majority whoever joins in this course later on whoever wants to become a pilot the people that will be instructing you are ground instructors okay like me jayesh rajji all of us we are trained ground and synthetic flight instructors <coughs> then you can be get a job as a simulator pilot or a simulator instructor as i told you earlier there is a lot of simulation that is done before you be a pilot you can't uh, practice every single scenario in an actual aircraft so whatever you cannot practice all these emergencies urgency situations that you cannot practice you can go and practice on a authorized simulator okay we have a authorized simulator at our base also where you could do your flying training you will be flying an actual authorized simulator so you can become a simulator instructor till the time you get an airline job then you can work as a assistant flight instructor now <laughs> when you go to a flying club directly they are not going to hand over an aircraft to you and tell you go fly Okay, an instructor will be with you, and he will teach you every single thing: how to read an instrument, what what button does what things. Now, I'm sure you might have at least seen an aircraft in a picture. Okay, you have seen there are so many buttons, so many levers, and everything. Now, how to use them? That is what your instructor will teach you, and you can work as an assistant flight instructor right after your commercial pilot license training. Apart from that, you can work for the country in form of becoming uh, or uh, recruiting yourself as a coast guard or in the air force. and especially people who want to join air force after their cpl there is a separate way you can do that especially if you have finished your graduation graduation is a must if you want to join the air force apart from the nda pathway okay and we will guide you you can come down if any one of you is interested you can come down to the college and one of our counselor or uh, mr dheeraj will help you understand how this works all right let's go ahead with the next thing okay now this is another important aspect of your career okay not this is something not related to your commercial pilot license training or your bsc aviation but this is something to do with what after your commercial pilot license okay type rating okay when you get a drivers license <coughs> if you have a light motor vehicle license you can drive any car any car you can drive on the street which falls under that weight category but when you become a pilot it doesn't work that way okay every single aircraft that you want to fly should be endorsed on your license if it is not endorsed you cannot fly it okay during your training you'll usually get two to three different aircrafts endorsed on your license and you will have the privilege to fly those aircrafts only after getting a commercial license however when you fly for an airline you i'm sure you know airlines are big aircrafts now if you have done your training on a small aircraft how can you expect yourself to fly a bigger aircraft so for that you have to undergo a course known as type rating okay type rating can either be done by yourself or your airline can do it for you Okay. Once you get a job, the airline will send you for the type rating on the aircraft that they fly and that you will be flying in the future. 
and this course is not is just for around third uh, 45 to 60 days and you will get rated on a on a particular big aircraft okay this is only when you can start flying that aircraft as a first officer or as a trainee first officer me myself i'm currently a junior first officer with indigo and i'll soon be i'll soon start flying an a320 i have done my trip rating along with rajdeep on the a320 aircraft and we can fly those aircrafts commercially okay Jace, you want to talk more about type rating? I think the change. Uh, I think Rajdeep, topic. you should Rajdeep, you should go ahead with this. You have done your type rating as well recently. Cover up the topics. So yeah, so the type rating schedule. Uh, first of all, the main difference between flying a bigger jet and uh, flying uh, a smaller aircraft, the training aircraft, is that in a training aircraft you'll be flying alone, right? There'll be no one uh, with you. You'll be flying solo most of the time. The main difference is when you're flying a jet, you'll be flying with the captain or, uh, you know, with the first officer when you yourself become a captain. So you need to know how to manage your crew. That is known as the crew resource management CRM or MCC multi-crew training. Uh, so that these are two things that is different than from the normal single agent or the normal CPL that you do. You need to know how to work with a different set of crew. As you can see, there are there's cabin crew. There's the ground crew, there are the pilots, all of these things have to be done together. So firstly, you are done, you are taught how to fly a jet engine. Now, the training that you will do is on a piston engine. A piston engine is similar to that in a bike or in a car. The pistons are there and then those using that, the power is generated or whatever. In a jet engine, there's a big difference between flying a jet engine and flying a piston engine. First of all, that difference is shown to you, that is familiarized to you. So that is jet engine familiarization and MCC training, multi crew cooperation training. Then the aircraft that you're going to fly, let's say for this example, Airbus 320, you want to fly the 320. So of course you have to know about the aircraft, you know, you know about the systems, the electrical system, the hydraulic system, all of this pressurization systems, all of those things will be briefed to you properly in your ground training part and in your crew resource management part. All of these together will be condensed into a course of about 15 to 20 days. This means you'll be you know, studying very hard and you'll be going in for all of those things. Then comes the flight management systems. Now, uh, I hope most of you know that uh, in the modern airlines, most of the flying is done via an autopilot. We as pilots monitor those systems and the autopilot is, uh, you know, is the one that actually flies and it has a management system. That is the flight management system. We'll be learning about that. Then we have to first check the aircraft externally before we actually take off. Are the wings fine? Is there any damage to the wings? Is there any damage to the wheels? Are the landing gears okay? Is the tire pressure okay? The normal check, if you're going for a long drive, you should first check the car, right? Everything is fine or not. That is also shown in your, um, you know, in your type rating. How do we check the aircraft? What is the proper process of checking the aircraft? Now, uh, in the cockpit, you know, there are so many buttons. Just next time you are on a flight, just after the flight, just ask the cabin crew to go ask you to, uh, to let you enter the cockpit. And it is actually allowed many of the captains, they allow you to see the, uh, you know, cockpit when if you ask them to. So if you can see, there are so many buttons. So you should know what is the proper procedure for doing everything. Everything over here is based on procedures. So you have to be well aware of the procedures. That is what we practice in case of an engine failure, single engine failure, dual engine failure. How do we save the aircraft? How we do we save everyone that is around us, along with, you know, sitting with us, all the passengers. So that is something that is also shown to us. Cockpit procedure training. Then comes mass and balance calculation. Now, all of you are PCM students or maybe engineering students. All of you know something about the center of gravity. So center of gravity is the point from which the gravity acts on the aircraft, as simple as that. So you need to place your passengers, your, yourself, the baggage that you'll be carrying such a way that the CG limits of the aircraft are not exceeded. All those things, again, every car has a performance, you know, the type of engine, the type of the weight of the car, everything will give it a perform a particular performance. So this performance will be explained to you in your type rating. All of this is after your main CPL training. This won't be in your CPL. This is a higher level of training. This is once you're well aware how to actually fly an aircraft, that's when you go to the next step. It's just like doing your MBBS. And after MBBS, there's something called as MD, which is known as a specialization, right? 
you do your MBBS, that's the base course. When you get the certificate, you get the, you get the title, doctor. As soon as you complete your CPL, you get the title captain. And after that, just like in an MD, how you go ahead for a neurosurgeon or something like that, that's how you specialize on a particular aircraft. And when you specialize on a particular aircraft, this is what you learn about. You learn everything in and out about the aircraft that you're going to fly. So with that, uh, we have the simulator sessions. Now, this is a real life simulator. That means it will simulate 99% of the feelings of an actual aircraft. It is said that if you can crash a simulator, you can crash a real aircraft. It is that, uh, you know, that precise and that exact to, the, to, to a real aircraft. But it is on a, you know, it is on a big, it is a very big simulator. It's very costly and it is, uh, you know, used for training purposes for the very reason that it is very precise. So 20 hours of the flying training you will do on a FPS. That is a fixed based simulator. In that, you will get in get in touch with all the buttons you'll get to know where, where the buttons are you know how do we do the procedures correctly and the simulator won't move that's why it is called fixed based simulator whereas the second part of it is known as the ffs or the full flight simulator in that the movements of an actual aircraft are replicated from the time you push back your takeoff your landing everything if you make a hard landing You'll actually feel yourself getting that jerk. If you make a bounce landing, you'll feel the aircraft bouncing. So that uh, all those actions are replicated 99% accurately. And it's a very precise device that is used. And just like your training, uh, your CPL training at the end, you have your simulator checks or what we know as a sim checks. A check is basically a, a senior pilot checking you. That's why it is called a check. So he checks you whether you are capable of flying that aircraft, whether you can bring the aircraft down in case of an emergency, whether you can bring yourself and others back safely to the ground. So you have to give one check in the daytime. That means the simulator will, have, it's a it's basically a big computer. It will have all the daytime things. It'll have proper sunlight. You'll see, you can see uh, the runway and everything. That is GFT day. And then comes the GFT night, which is in the night time. And then last is the instrument rating pilot proficiency check, IRPPC. That means it checks whether you can fly using the instruments and if you are a proficient pilot. IR instrument rating pilot proficiency PP check. IR PPC. So these are the things that will be done in your type rating. And after, once you are done with this, you are officially qualified to fly the bigger jets or the ones that you actually see in the airports, the ones that you actually sit when you want to fly from one place to other. You have to do this to complete your uh, you know, airline pilot takka course. And after this, in some of some situations, just like Captain Shyans, you first uh, get your job and then the company gets you your gets your type rating done. But in some cases, you can like I have done, you can do your type rating beforehand and keep it and be ready for the market. This type rating adds an extra uh, you know advantage to your resume, obviously, because you're a type rated pilot. You are ready to fly the aircraft whenever the company wants you to. So this is an extra benefit out of your type. So yeah, Captain Shyam, you will take over now, or do I continue? Very on to you. Okay. Mm. Okay. So like right now, Captain Rajiv was mentioning about uh, the type rating and how is it important to be trained on a type a simulator, a type simulator in order to fly this big aircraft, okay? Because as a commercial pilot, you will be trained on small aircraft. Okay, if you want to fly those big aircraft, you need to be type rated, okay? But apart from the training which you will undergo, okay, you should also have some psychologically, a psychological uh, thing that you are qualified enough to become a pilot who can fly an aircraft with 100 or 200 or 300 passengers with him in that particular flight. Imagine you're flying an aircraft, just may have two, 200 passengers and that captain is suicidal. You want to fly with a captain just suicidal? Okay, no one wants to fly with a captain who is suicidal. Okay, you have to imagine that captain is in your hand. Okay, so do you think that you will hire an airline pilot who is suicidal? No, no airlines will hire a pilot who is suicidal. No airline will hire a pilot who is adventure junkie. Ho, okay, just go skydiving person there, just go scuba diving person there. SLO who airlines hire me. Why? Because they don't want a pilot who is adventure junkie. Adrenaline, rules, regulations, 
रूटीन फॉलो आना चाहिए नाउ इन ऑर्डर टू नो योर साइकोलॉजी ऑफ अ पायलट ओके इन ऑर्डर टू नो हाउ अ पायलट थिंक्स वेदर ही विल बी क्वालिफाइड इनफ टू बी इन अ कॉकपिट विल ही थिंक करेक्टली व्हेन ही इज अ कॉकपिट विल ही बी सुसाइडल विल ही बी स्ट्रेस्ड एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा हाउ विल ही मेक अ डिसीजन ओके एवरी एयरलाइन विल कंडक्ट अ टेस्ट व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एज अ साइकोमेट्री टेस्ट ओके जब आप किसी एयरलाइन में जॉइन करोगे और एयरलाइन आपका एक साइकोमेट्रिक टेस्ट कंडक्ट करेगा विच विल बी बेसिकली टेस्टिंग योर इंडिविजुअल मेंटल कैपेबिलिटीज ओके हाउ आर यू मेंटली हाउ आर यू साइकोलॉजिकली ओके हाउ इज योर बिहेवियर हाउ इज योर एटीट्यूड टूवर्ड्स थिंग ओके वेदर इफ यू फॉल सिक अगर आपको बुखार आता है तो डू यू थिंक दैट इट्स ओके एंड आई विल टेक अ मेडिसिन एंड आई बी फाइन और इफ अगर आपको बुखार आता है अरे कोविड हो गया रहेगा अब क्या होगा अब मेरी जिंदगी खत्म हो गई डू यू थिंक लाइक दिस आई यू स्केप्टिकल अबाउट थिंग्स आई यू हैव डू यू हैव एनी ओ सी डीज डू यू गेट नर्वस डू यू गेट एंशियस ऑल ऑफ दिस थिंग इज चेस्टेड इन अ टेस्ट कॉल एज द साइकोमेट्री टेस्ट नो पायलट फ्लाइंग राइट नाउ इन द वर्ल्ड इज फ्लाइंग दैट एयरक्राफ्ट विदाउट गोइंग थ्रू दिस साइकोमेट्री टेस्ट हर पायलट को ये साइकोमेट्रिक टेस्ट देना होता है कंपलसरीली बिफोर एक्चुअली गोइंग एंड सिटिंग इनसाइड साइड कॉकपिट एंड फ्लाइंग दैट पर्टिकुलर जेट एयरलाइनर ये ट्रेनिंग के टाइम पे नहीं होगा बिकॉज ट्रेनिंग के टाइम पे अगर अकेले फ्लाई कर रहे हो कुछ हुआ तो आपके साथ होने वाला है लेकिन एयरलाइंस के टाइम पे इट विल बी डन बिकॉज इट विल बी यू रिस्पॉन्सिबल ऑफ हंड्रेड एंड एटी पैसेंजर्स एंड अ मल्टी बिलियन डॉलर एयरक्राफ्ट विच यू आर फ्लाइंग अलॉन्ग विद इट एंड द कंपनी एंड कंपनी का रेपुटेशन एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा ऑल अलॉन्ग विद इट ऑल ऑफ दिस थिंग्स विच यूर सींग ऑन स्क्रीन is telling you about the psychometric test obviously that is way into the future when you actually complete your training your cpl airlines mein lag jaoge type rating ho jayega uske baad ye particular test aapko dena hoga okay moving on shraj this the right. next slide so yes sir with that uh, we end today's session and uh, dheeraj sir on to you thank you sir <laughs> Am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Captain Shreyans and Captain Jayesh and Captain Rajdeep. You have presented very well. Uh, you have covered everything, like uh, how to begin with and uh, what should be your uh, first step uh, in this. Uh, and everything you covered like uh, what uh, should be the documentation part what is your physical status what should be your physical status what should be your mental status how financial help uh, you can provide and how you should prepare yourself uh, financially for this uh, course and uh, what will be there in course and how you are going to cover what will be the advantage of this course is and how they will place and everything you cover so i don't think uh, there are uh, not many questions will be but uh, we'll see uh, if there are any question on the youtube channel uh, are we having any questions harsh uh, i'll i'll announce it once sir uh, i'll also check the chat box uh, so we are not having any questions currently and uh, I'll ask students once uh, if they have any question. So it was a very, uh, it was really a very informative session, and we are really thankful to Cop Captain Jayesh sir and Captain Shyam sir for giving us a, a their valuable time and uh, knowledge about aviation. I would like to request all the aspiring students or rather pilots to ask questions or doubts if they have regarding today's session, and they can kindly uh, type it in the. chat box so that the captains can know about your doubts and clear them accordingly i don't think we have anything currently uh i think uh, they have covered everything because of which yeah. no questions are coming <laughs> actually actually sir so i have a doubt i have a doubt uh, i would like to ask I, i would like to ask a doubt personally yeah. that uh, yes i got to know about each and everything but there was a thing in between you mentioned the bmi index which uh, also requires the height right so is there any height criteria that the person should have this much of height to be a pilot uh not really uh, see not the dgc nor uh, airline airlines might have a criteria based from so it changes from airline to airline but uh, in majority cases i know uh, my colleagues 
I know a colleague who's like I think five one who's a pilot. Okay. So uh, I mean I don't think uh, anyone any uh, usually in India even if you see the average height it's somewhere around five two five three or even more than that. Uh, so for uh, male pilots or for like students I don't think anything above five one should be doable. Okay, as far as as long as your yeah. hands can touch all the buttons and all the controls in the cockpit and your feet can touch the rudder pedals, okay, you can practically fly any aircraft. Okay, बाहर से aircraft might look as big as possible, but अंदर से वो cockpit same ही होता है. May you fly a Cessna or आप वो A380 fly कर रहे हो, it's the same. So it's not about the height requirement; it's only about the BMI weight to height the ratio. Okay, okay. So I had this only doubt because I am a very average heighted person and I had this doubt. Uh, because most of the fields where we have like this uh, kind of like flying and uh, flying a flight we have a professional job they always have a height criteria like we, you also mentioned air force so in all this all this type of uh, jobs or rather professional fields we have a height criteria so i had this doubt that uh, even this pilot thing has a height criteria or not so thank you so much for clearing that doubt uh, Yeah. Pleasure, pleasure. All right. Hmm. I think Harsh lagged out. <laughs> okay. Uh, Vijay, sir, you want to conclude the session? Yeah. I yeah. I think uh, there are no more doubts. So hmm. we don't have any doubts. I think so. Hmm. Sir, should I proceed for for the vote of thanks? Yes, sir. She can start. Yes. So, before calling upon our head of aviation for a vote of thanks, I would like to recite few lines for uh, our aspiring pilots, like a motivating line which I wrote a few moments before. Uh, the line is like, "Aaj jee raha hu, aake khol. Kal kahi khwabo me kho jaunga. Aaj jee raha hu, aake khol. Kal kahi khwabo me kho jaunga." आज जमी पर कदम थाम थम नहीं रहे कल शायद उस नील गगन में उड़ जाऊंगा तब कहीं इस अस्थाई दुनिया से अलग आसमां में अपना एक घर बनाऊंगा और बस पायलट बन जाऊंगा और बस पायलट बन जाऊंगा तो तो थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी आई थिंक वी हैव अ डाउट इट इज इन द चैट बॉक्स द डाउट इज वॉट इज द टोटल टाइम टू क्लियर बी एस सी एविएशन एंड आई थिंक सर कैप्टन श्रीयान सर क्लियर इट इट इज थ्री इयर्स सो प्लीज डू मैं इट करेक्ट या तो अंकिता इज देर एनी मोर डाउट और शुड आई प्रोसीड विद द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स देर आर नो डाउट यू कैन प्रोसीड विद द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स ओके So now I would like to call upon the head of aviation of Shri L R Tiwari College of Aviation, Professor Dheeraj R Singh Sir, to deliver a word of thanks. Thank you, thank you, Harsh, uh, uh, for uh, this wonderful hosting part, and uh, uh, I'm uh, really thankful for uh, Maverick Team, uh, our partner uh, in the this uh, uh, aviation part. Okay. Uh, Uh, as you know uh, we are conduct uh, uh, we are going to start a bsc aviation course uh, from this year and uh, maverick aviation is our official partner for cpl and flying training and uh, uh, we are very, uh, really thankful of uh, the entire team of Ma- uh, maverick aviation for conducting this session they have covered everything uh, related to uh, how uh, this should uh, start how that they should proceed and how uh, everything will be done in bsc aviation and cpl training so uh, i'm really thankful for this presentation part and also i would uh, extend my uh, uh, gratitude and uh, uh, thanks towards uh, the management of uh, shri lr tiwari college of aviation uh, especially uh, our chairman uh, shri uh, lalan tiwari ji our uh, uh, secretary is rahul tiwari ji our uh, chief operating officer Uh, uh mr utsav tiwari and uh, a lot of uh, uh, supports i uh, got from uh, rahul education society group especially from uh, uh, vikas tiwari sir the shri devi madam and uh, uh, for uh, organizing this event uh, uh, good technical support was given uh, from mr yogesh dubey somya philip ma'am 
and uh, the hosting part was done by, uh, by Harsh Tiwari and Kita and uh, I'm uh, really thankful of everyone uh, who has participated in this, all the uh, college, uh, dif uh, different institute college principal and uh, the uh, faculty members, the students who have participated in this event. I'm really thankful to you. Thank you so much. And uh, we can conclude here and we can stop streaming right now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much.